Angie is your home for everything home, and they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. Back to Life. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. On Sunday, May 5th, 1957, John Pollock and his wife Florence Pollock said goodbye to their daughters, 11-year-old Joanna and 6-year-old Jacqueline. The two sisters were walking to Mass a normal activity for the girls, and the sisters met up with a classmate. Though the walk was short, the three children wouldn't make it to church that day. Soon after leaving, the sisters and best friend were struck and killed by a driver with their own grim backstory. But while the physical bodies of the girls died that day, they were thought to live on in twins born just one year after their deaths. Today we're talking about the mystery of the Pollock sisters, a case study, if you believe, in reincarnation. John and Florence Pollock, a deeply religious Catholic and Protestant, respectively, met in the early 1940s. A few years later, Florence decided to convert to Catholicism, and the two were married, settling in Northeast England. Despite John and Florence Pollock's deeply held Christian belief system, John was open to other cultural and spiritual ideas about the universe, and was especially intrigued by reincarnation. John believed strongly in the idea of past and future lives, and at the age of nine, read a novel that described the concept in a way that intrigued and fascinated him, so much so that John would pray to God for evidence of reincarnation. Of course, this was all in the past, and the two were dedicated to raising their children in the Catholic faith, especially because Florence wasn't really having any of the reincarnation talk. To be sure, she was a bit more straight-laced than her husband. In any case, the Pollocks were generally pretty happy— They owned a thriving grocery and dairy delivery business and had family support around them. They had two boys, and in 1946, they had their third child, a daughter they named Joanna. In 1951, after the family moved to Hexham, Northumberland, their fourth child, Jacqueline, was born. With the growing demands of their business, the four children were raised mostly by their maternal grandmother, but in their free time, the parents did their best to ensure the Pollock children were loved and wanted for nothing. Though all the Pollock kids were very close, sisters Joanna and Jacqueline were inseparable. The slender Joanna took on a motherly role to her stocky, tough young sister, and both loved performing and art. Joanna would often wear costumes and act in plays for Jacqueline and other neighborhood children. Both children were generous, outgoing, and really enjoyed combing people's hair, especially their father's. When she was three, Jacqueline fell into a bucket and cut her head, resulting in a scar on her forehead, which was especially visible in cold weather. Jacqueline also had a birthmark on the left side of her waist, two distinct features that will be important later. Another important note, Jacqueline also struggled to write, holding the pencil upright in her fist instead of between her thumb and index finger. Her teacher flagged this issue for the Pollocks, who were going to get their young daughter help with her writing skills. And then there was a moment that happened with Joanna, an event that would give the Pollocks pause. One day, the young Joanna announced to her parents that she would never be a lady. 
that sentence was voiced again and again and again by the older sister, leaving John and Florence a little confused. But their outgoing daughter was imaginative, a child, and children say the darndest things, right? Fast forward to Sunday, May 5th or 7th, depending on the source. Joanna is 11 and Jacqueline is 6, and the girls are walking to Mass. After saying goodbye to their parents, they met up with their classmate Anthony and continued to church. Meanwhile, a local woman took what she believed to be, quote, lethal quantities of aspirin and phenobarbitone, and got into her car with the intention of ending her life. She had been forced to separate from her children days before, I couldn't find out why, but she was beside herself, and felt she had nothing to live for. Residents of Hexham saw her driving erratically through the small town's residential streets, and eventually she lost control of her car and it slammed into a stone wall. Between the wall and the car was the sidewalk, where Joanna, Jacqueline, and Anthony were walking. Trapped between the car and the wall behind them, 11-year-old Joanna Pollock and 6-year-old Jacqueline Pollock died at the scene. Their friend Anthony would die on the way to the hospital. The woman in the car was taken into custody and eventually sent to a psychiatric facility. The incident made headlines all over Britain, and of course, the community was devastated. Replaying the horrifying events of that day over and over, Florence suffered severe depression and anxiety, and tried desperately to forget what had happened. But John had a different reaction to the tragedy that his family endured. John Pollock told reporters that he'd experienced something strange, something that gave him hope. The very day that his daughters died, John had a vision of his daughters in heaven, happy. Then he began sensing their presence much closer, in an upstairs room in the house. John took to spending time in that room in order to be closer to his daughters. He later said he felt the girls' deaths had been, quote, punishment from God for having prayed for proof of reincarnation. At the same time, he said, he believed his punishment would be followed by an actual answer, that his daughters would somehow come back through reincarnation. Florence did not like that idea, and Florence and John's divergent beliefs and ways of coping almost broke up their marriage. The two left the Catholic Church in the 1960s, but stayed together, if by a thread. A year after the tragedy, Florence began feeling strange in a completely different way. After seeing a doctor, she was told that she was having a baby. John Pollock was especially thrilled. He had a feeling that Florence would have twins, and felt strongly that his daughters would come back through his wife's pregnancy. But the doctor assured the couple that no, it would be a single birth based on palpitation, fetal heartbeat, and the lack of twins in either of the parents' family. But, on October 4th, 1958, Florence Pollock gave birth to not one, but two children. Twin girls. The Pollocks named them Jillian and Jennifer. After the twins' birth, the Pollocks moved to another city called Bexley Bay to start fresh. But a new start turned out to be not so new, after all. Let's take a break. Angie is your home for everything home. And they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Hi, hello, how are you? Hello. We're checking in. Here is the check-in. This is this is when it happens. We're here, you're here, everybody's here. What do we do now? Yeah, we just <laughs> just stare at each other being like, uh, so, oof. how's the wet? Whoa, whoa, what do you- Great um, Mondays, huh? Are you binging any television shows? <laughs> yeah, I had something good to eat last weekend. How about you? Um, I don't know, I just like to thank all the- People that are listening, oh. supporting the show, spreading the good word hmm. of Ghost Town. That sounds nice. And a fun part of any conversation is when it turns to politics. Mm, so I love that. We want to say hello to our government. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. Thank you, and hello. We got talking about finance. Mm. 
bringing up the finance, ups and downs, portfolios, T bonds, gold. <laughs> sell, buy, buy, sell, percentages. Greed, greed is good. Greed is good. <laughs> of course, Ashley Madsen. Hello. Talking about kids these days. <laughs> what's going on with kids these days? I oh, don't boy. get it. I don't know what's going on. Oh, boy. Why are they not doing exactly what I was doing uh, when I was a kid? When I was their age, uh, I... I drank out of a hose, and apparently that's good. <laughs> that means my life was better because I drank out of a hose. Yeah, it was dark. <laughs> Kat Joselle. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and talking about gotta have it recipes, gotta have it formal wear, mm -hmm. gotta have it gadgets, all the gotta have it. Wow, wow. Essentials, home kitchen lifestyle essentials. Bringing it to the surface, things you didn't know about, but you mm. gotta have it. <laughs> Charlie Gilbert. Hello. And the host of this small talk party. Whoa. Whoa, she brought the snacks. Showing off her wall-to-wall -wall <laughs> glass mansion that's like on the on like the, a cliffside. Oh shit, yeah. You know, one of those yeah. things. Infinity pool that don't touch that. Yeah. Don't look at that. That's mine. Yeah, and if you go into the infinity pool, it'll be like Willy Wonka style. <laughs> exactly, up, exactly. Who knows where you're in? Where, you're where lucky you're to even get through her doorway. Avian Noble. So you want no ads, no chit chat, bonus episodes, just the good stuff. Should have um, bonus episodes up by the time you're listening to this. And if you want to try it for seven days free, just to see if you like it, mm. you could take it or leave it to see if you're like, oh, I like listening to these without the chit chat or the ads, or I, mm -hmm. I like all the bonus episodes. And there's a lot to, you know, if you haven't listened to all of our episodes and you're like, I want to, but I don't want to spend more time listening to the BS. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no one does. Free seven day trial. Patreon, patreon.com slash ghost town pod. Mm -hmm. Pretty now, nice. You want to, I don't want to talk about my past lives. You no. want to get into some other past lives? Let's get to it. We're going back to the UK. And after the death of Joanna and Jacqueline, the Pollocks get some positive news. They are having twins. And Jillian is born first a few minutes later. Jennifer. They were identical twins, which was strange in and of itself, as there was no, again, no history of twins in either John or Florence's family, like the doctor said. But even though they looked exactly alike, Jillian was a little thinner and Jennifer a little stockier, similar to their older sisters. But things got stranger. Jennifer had a birthmark on her waist in the same spot where Jacqueline had a birthmark. She also had a spot on her forehead in the same place where Jacqueline had a scar from falling. As they got older, the twins mirrored the behaviors of their deceased older sisters. Despite being only minutes older than Jennifer, Jillian would mother her sister, wear costumes, put on plays, and both would delight in brushing hair, especially their father's. When the twins were two or three, Florence showed them dolls Joanna and Jacqueline used to play with. Some say they asked for the dolls, depending on the source. But most kids may have fought over the dolls, again, highly coveted commodities for young children. The twins did not, however. Calmly, Jillian took Joanna's doll, and Jennifer took Jacqueline's. Both girls said the dolls were their Christmas presents from Santa Claus. And they were, but not for them, for their older sisters, Joanna and Jacqueline. Then the two named the dolls exactly what their sisters had named them, Mary and Susan, as if they had known their names all along. Also around this time, the Pollocks decided it was time to go back to Hexham for a visit. As they passed by a local park Jacqueline and Joanna used to play at, the girls lit up. They said they wanted to play there and eagerly swung on the swings that their older sisters had loved. They also recognized the school that Joanna and Jacqueline had formerly attended, even though they had never seen or set foot inside. When they arrived at the Pollock's old house, the girls recognized every corner of their former home. But it wasn't their former home. And they even knew their neighbors. At that point, Florence was acting as the girls' primary caregiver, Yet when they returned to Hexham, the girls kept turning to their grandmother for love and direction. If you remember, the grandmother was taking care of Joanna and Jacqueline before they died. When they went back to where they actually lived, the eerie similarities continued. Jennifer had trouble writing, holding the pencil in her little fist. Florence Pollock used to wear an apron while helping her husband with his milk delivery business way back when. But soon after her daughter's death, she never wore it again. When Jillian and Jennifer were about four, John put on the apron while painting, and Jennifer asked him why he was wearing, quote, mommy's coat. Then she became annoyed because Jillian didn't recognize the apron. 
John and Florence believe that because Joanna, the older deceased sister, was at school while her mother worked at the delivery, when asked how she knew it was, quote, mommy's coat, Jennifer said her mom used to wear it while delivering milk. Of course, John for sure thought that his prayers were answered. At first, Florence was skeptical, even frightened. But soon, with all of this accumulating evidence, she became much more open to the bizarre idea that reincarnation occurred right in her own home. Soon, the couple realized another disturbing fact that really made them wonder. Jillian and Jennifer were terrified of cars. Both Jennifer and Jillian seemed more cautious around cars than any other children either of the couple had ever seen. The twins would keep close and grasp their mother's hand at the sight of a car. Once, when a vehicle started to near them in the alleyway, the girls clung to each other and started yelling. Florence also once overheard her daughters discussing an accident, despite never being told about their older sisters, and never having been in an accident themselves. Florence would occasionally witness Jillian touching Jennifer's head and saying, quote, The blood's coming out of your eyes. That's where the car hit you. According to John, Jacqueline's head was bandaged above the eyes when he identified the bodies after the accident. But then, from the ages of five to seven... All memories and mannerisms to their older sisters seemed to completely vanish. But not before the twins solidified their parents' belief in reincarnation and attracted the attention of Ian Stevenson, an American psychiatrist and child psychologist who had for years studied reincarnation as an academic phenomena. In the spring of 1963, Stevenson learned of the case of the Pollock twins following the voracious reporting on the tragedy and subsequent children. He met with the children when they were four, claiming that they were proof of reincarnation. He began explaining that since Jillian and Jennifer were monozygotic twins and therefore were genetically identical, Jennifer's birthmarks could not be explained by genetics. And because Florence Pollock didn't believe in reincarnation while she was pregnant with the twins, the maternal impression, the effect of a mother on their unborn child, could not be the cause for the marks. Not super strong evidence, but still he kept studying it and, and kept studying the girls. In 1967, Stevenson founded the Division of Perceptual Studies – at the University of Virginia. The department covered extrasensory perceptions such as telepathy, ghostly visions, after-death communications, poltergeists, near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, and children's memories of previous lives. Stevenson also wrote several books, including Children Who Remember Previous Lives, A Question of Reincarnation, published in 1987. In this book, Stevenson underlined that children are the key to learning more about reincarnation, and with the Pollock sisters, describes 14 cases of children which point to evidence of reincarnation. He writes, quote, Although reports of such claims of reincarnation are rare, there are some. The person making them is almost always a young child, from whose mind these memories fade after some years. But of course, a lot of people criticize Stevenson's work. After all, parents who believe strongly in reincarnation would probably pass those ideas along to their kids, along with their fears that occurred after the trauma of losing two kids. For example, of course, Jillian and Jennifer would be afraid of cars, probably because their parents were scared shitless of cars around their young kids, and for good reason. Of course, let's not also forget that the twins had two much older brothers, and they likely inadvertently learned about their deceased sisters through their relationship with their brothers. So why do kids seem to recall memories and not teenagers or adults? People say children are less imprinted on by their current life and conditioning, and more able to recall memories during and before birth. According to the University of Virginia School of Medicine and Division of Perceptual Studies, yes, the same division Stevenson founded is alive and well, they say, quote, Some young children, usually between the ages of two and five, speak about memories of a previous life they claim to have lived. At the same time, they often show behaviors, such as phobias or preferences, that are unusual within the context of their particular family and cannot be explained by any current life events. These memories appear to be concordant with the child's statements about a previous life. So back to Jillian and Jennifer Pollock for a second. Their past life memories seem to stop entirely after the age of seven. As adults, maybe because of their father, the world, whatever reason, they kind of just accepted that they were Joanna and Jacqueline reincarnated, even though they couldn't remember any of the stories and coincidences from their childhood. I find it pretty funny that I looked at a lot of sources for this episode, and when journalists revisited these two girls as women, they showed, quote, a mild skepticism towards the notion of reincarnation. Pretty amazing. But then something happened in 1981 when the twins were 23. Jillian had random visions in which she saw herself playing in a sandpit in Wickham, a town the family lived when Joanna was around three years old. 
Jillian described the lawn, the house, and the gardens perfectly, like she had studied a photograph, though she had never been to Wickham or knew of it at all. Of course, this case is widely debated, and it and cases like it have always fascinated me. Are children the vessels of past life information, or are they absorbing the information around them? And are they more perceptive than we can ever know? I guess I will just have to have a kid and ask them a lot of questions before the age of five or seven, or die myself and come back, or or both. We'll see how life shakes out. Angie is your home for everything home. And they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish. Or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com.